The North American Southwest Desert, home of some of the more harsh terrain in the North American Southwest. Journey with us this week into the heart of Craggy Lands, where we hope to come face to face with the mythical and dangerous Desert Peccary. The Desert Peccary, also known as the Javelina, is a particularly wily beast. It played a feature role in the expedition of William Wesley, one of the first men to explore this area in the early 1800s. As Wesley often pointed out, the desert peccary prefers the stillness offered by these canyon walls. Many of Wesley's detailed journal entries regarding the peccary still exist. We're nearing base camp now. From there we'll be launching our search for the desert peccary. I was excited to meet the crew. We'd be spending the next few days in the harsh desert together. I wanted to bond with them quickly. We have a lot of work ahead, and our ability to function as a team will be crucial. Ah, camp at last. It always feels like coming home. I've been hankering to get back into nature, to pitch a tent, cook over an open flame, and sing songs around the campfire. I adore the wilderness. Mr. Jennings, pleasure to meet you. John Slapwitz, producer. Hello, let John. A, let me get you a laminate here. This will allow you to move freely around the desert. Uh, hey, let's go meet the crew. They're dying to meet you. Uh, grab a bite to eat. Come on. Yeah. I think we're going to do some good work here. So, I'm really sorry about the meager spread. I think things are going to get bigger once the pilot takes off. Uh, how about a drink? I don't drink. Vodka tonic for Mr. Jennings. I and, don't drink. Uh, I'll have a mineral water. How long until we eat? Uh, we can eat right away, sir. Meal! So, where are you guys from? Margarita's up. LA. LA. California? The crew seemed eager to learn more about the peccary, so we wasted no time in going over the anatomic details. There are subtle nuances that set this little guy apart from your average barnyard pig, and that's what makes this fella all the more intriguing. Evolution has shaped the peccary for maximum aerodynamic efficiency, allowing it to move through the desert at amazing speeds. However, these quick bursts of energy are often followed by an immediate, almost narcoleptic, need for sleep. Catching the trail of this elusive desert peccary is not an easy task. Their tiny hooves leave very subtle marks in the desert floor, which are quickly blown away by the harsh desert winds, making the odds of finding this elusive and mysterious creature Nearly impossible. Here's some. This is why. Let's go see. Wow! These are some very fresh tracks. It looks like one bedded down here for a while. See the outline of the body here? By the looks of this area here, this was a male. I'd say a young male. And look, ooh, a scat sample. What a find! Mm. A subtle hint of juniper, which would make sense as they use this as a digestive aid. Let's follow the tracks. Guys, over here, more scat! Though our first day of searching proved unsuccessful, spirits were high. I thought I would take this opportunity to share with the crew my second greatest love, the folk song. Uh, you like music? Hey, how's it going? How about you, you like music? You look like you like music. The professionalism and focus was inspirational. Now we're chasing a pig. Clearly, this is one of the best crews I would ever have the pleasure of working with. Meeting in five minutes. Meeting in five. Gentlemen, call this meeting. I, I realize we've had some setbacks. I appreciate your professionalism throughout. We have a new plan. I'm going to turn this meeting over to Mr. Jennings. Please give your host your attention. Khaki, they're all yours. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Again, we've had some trip ups, but I think I've got a good plan. Yeah. We're going to take the 75 millimeter Mambo right, yeah. Keep that, get tranquilizer out. gun. You there. 
You look like you love guns. Can you handle that? You're gonna be our gunman. Peccaries respond to nets like most mammals do. They get caught in them, become contained. Gunman, shoot the pig in the head. Uh -huh, right. Pow! Right there. Pig is gone. Pig's gone. Catering. You're gonna take the net. Yeah, yeah. Throw that over the pig. Right over there. Come on, son. As you can see, the pig is contained and tranquilized. Any questions? Questions? No? No. Let's go do it. There it is. Shoot it. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh no. Hey man, that's oh. not a pig. Oh. Take it off. Well, I guess if I'm going to find a peccary, I darn well better sound like one. This here's a peccary call. We were blessed with perfect weather on our next day of adventure. After a slow start, I'm once again reminded that hope springs eternal. Peccary or no peccary, you can always count on the desert to turn up many an unexpected wonder. Oh, it's a beautiful species. Nice specimen. It's an endangered high desert tarantula, and not too many of those around anymore. Let's go see what else we can find. Though daunting to the untrained eye, for the rugged survivalist, this terrain is a veritable smorgasbord of nutritional options. Truly, this is the land of abundance and mystery. This is also the land of discovery. For instance, it was here that I discovered that I have a rather intense allergy to Aphis mellifera, the common desert bee. Ow! Khaki's oh. down. So then, all right, Marlin says, that's not a rhino. <laughs> what, what, what was a rhino for? Well, it wasn't a rhino. That's what he said. <laughs> I don't know. He maybe had to be there. It was a great crew, though. It was, it was like the early days. My mother always implied that my scat eating tendencies would someday get the better of me. This sample contained copious amounts of the fungus bound ibutenic acid, a neurotoxin known to cause immediate and painful death within seconds of ingestion. As sickly and emaciated as my body was, my meager remains will still provide enough nourishment to quell the ravenous hunger that has knotted the shrunken bellies of my associates. Always planning ahead, the caterer eats his fill, then puts a little bit of me away for later. A full meal quickly brings on slumber allowing the digestive system of the crew to efficiently process my greedily swallowed muscle tissue. The sun slowly falls behind the majestic cliffs, just as it has since the dawn of time. The next morning I was well down the road to recovery. I was reminded of William Wesley's journal entry of March 26, 1842. Oh, thou elusive swine, how doth you vex me so. Hey guys, I'm feeling better. 